In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord rejoices in our reconciliation to one another, for the times in which we fail to forgive, or also seek forgiveness, we now ask our Lord for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the Paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, If the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all my statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtue he has practiced. Do I indeed derive any pleasure from the death of the wicked? Says the Lord God. Do I not rather rejoice when he turns away from his evil way that he may live? And if the righteous man turns from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abominable things that the wicked man does, can he do this and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered, because he has broken faith and committed sin. Because of this, he shall die. You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, It is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if the wicked, turning from the wickedness he has committed, does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? For the Lord is kindness. And with him is plenteous redemption. 
and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Tidying up at the rectory the other day, I decided to start looking at some of the books that were on the shelves. And what did I get to? None other than the good old high school yearbooks. Uh, So I opened them up and took a trip down memory lane. Uh, Maybe when you were in high school, you remember that people were voted the best of. You might be surprised what I was voted the best of. Now, I know you're thinking probably I was one of the best looking in the class. No, I I wasn't voted the best looking. Uh, You might have thought that I had the most charming spirit out there. No, I, I didn't have the most charming spirit. I was actually voted one of the ones with the best Christian attitude. Deacon Tim's laughing under the mask right now, right? But regardless, uh, that's the one that I was voted the best for. Now, when when I was in high school, I kind of had my mind made up about what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. A little bit nerdy in so many senses, always been sort of a bookworm, if you will. And as a result of that, not always the most athletic, uh, maybe not even almost the most popular. And you know how it is in high school with kids. Ultimately, you make frenemies, right? People that are really your enemies, but you kind of are friendly with them on the side. And there was this one person that would always give me these little not-so-subtle jabs when I was in high school that was just downright ugly and absolutely mean. So, of course, I would avoid that person at all cost. And needless to say, throughout the rest of our high school career, we didn't talk to each other all that much. Well, this year, no, actually it was last year, now it's 2021, I celebrated my 20-year class reunion. For those of you who are on 40 and 50, you're like, yeah, you young pup, you, right? Uh, But regardless, it was the 20th year, and it was time for us to have our class reunion. We had it all planned. I was planning to attend it. They actually asked the priests of the class to celebrate Mass, COVID strikes, and of course, we don't have it. But I got to tell you, one of the things that I was sort of interested in seeing what would happen would be my relationship with that frenemy of mine, uh, the person that I kind of wanted to talk to, but I really didn't all that much. So one day we were around the priest table and we're talking about the fact that the reunion was coming up and they asked me if I was excited about going to it. And I was like, not really, because I I really don't want to deal with this character. I mean, I hadn't talked to him probably in 20 years, but I really don't want to have to relive the experiences. 
And one of my brother priests looked at me and said, really? I mean, 20 years have gone by and you still haven't let that stuff go yet? Touche. But we hold on to those things pretty hard. Regardless, the class reunion was eventually rescheduled on a weekend that I couldn't go because, of course, I had obligations here at St. Margaret. But leave it to the Walmart, the place where all things magical always happen. Uh, This time I wasn't in the peanut butter aisle, wasn't even in the cereal aisle either. No, no, I was actually trying to get a six-pack near the beer section. And who do I end up seeing over in the New Roads Walmart? The frenemy of frenemies. And I had the opportunity to visit and say hello. And it was a pleasant exchange. Actually, in the pleasantries, I looked and I said, hmm, I don't feel so bad anymore because I'm not the freak of the class. Looks like age hasn't quite affected you the same way that it really should have. Uh, But regardless, got my six pack and I walked my way on out of the uh, Walmart and everything was sort of normal. But boy, I still held on to that grudge. 20 years. That's a long time to hold on to something that's really kind of foolish. It's really kind of insignificant. But yet, that's the story of our spirituality. Jesus addresses it today in the gospel. We hold on to stuff for whatever reasons that we do. And boy, it's very difficult for us to be able to simply let go and let God. There's a fine purpose for forgiveness and reconciliation. Surely it's about mending the relationship so that when we go to bed at night, we really don't have to worry with all of that difficulty so much. However, forgiveness is also very important because it impacts us. When we choose not to forgive, when we fail to forgive, ultimately it keeps us from being able to enter into fullness of communion and life with other people, and with our God. Really, that lack of forgiveness changes us and makes us a people who we really are not. Jesus gives the advice in today's gospel. Uh, make sure that you get rid of all of that stuff before condemnation actually happens for you, whether it be on this side of the world or whether it be somewhere else. And I was thinking to myself, well, thank God I finally let that go, except for the part that I looked at him and said, you know, age doesn't hit you all that well. Uh, Maybe I still have a couple of things that I need to learn in terms of forgiveness and reconciliation too. We find ourselves in the middle of Lent, and well, we're about a week past it already. How are those Lenten resolutions of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving working out? You probably have already had the Ruth Chris on Friday, and I don't know, maybe you haven't prayed as much as you thought you were, and fasting can be sometimes difficult too when you've got nice Easter chocolate staring at you in the face. But maybe there's one good resolution that you can make during this Lenten season. Figure out who this person is that you failed to forgive and deal with it. Now, that's going to take the rest of the Lenten season. Uh, We all have people that we fail to forgive. It might be a week or two ago that the offense happened. It could be 20, 30, or 40 years. But now is a good opportunity for us to find out where is that broken relationship. And perhaps we should go about seeking forgiveness and reconciliation, uh, not because we deserve it or we're owed it, uh, but it's simply an opportunity for us to grow in greater freedom so that we can go out and continue to mend the relationships that we're responsible for breaking. Ultimately, you and I are not only the recipients of some of that meanness of spirit that we encounter, but we're the dolers of it too. We give it out incredibly every day, and there might be people that look at us and say, I hope I never see that you know whatever again in my life. Forgiveness and reconciliation begins to change us, Why? So that we can have healthy, life-giving, spirit-filled encounters with our brothers and sisters. Who is it that you need forgiveness from? Who do you need to say, I'm sorry, to? What relationships need to be mended? And why not start right now in the middle of Lent? We stand to place before our God all of our prayers of petition and of need. 
We ask God for forgiveness for the times in which we failed to reconcile with our brothers and sisters who have harmed us in body, mind, or spirit. For forgiveness, we pray to the Lord that we might continue to be faithful to our Lenten discipline as we journey together through these 40 days. We pray to the Lord for those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for those who suffer greatly for the proclamation of our gospel. We pray to the Lord. For beloved dead who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, and for those for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers of petition and need that we offer up in the silence of our hearts. Give us hearts and minds pure and open, O God, so that we might mend the broken relationships of our lives. Provide the needs that we place before your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which, in your power and kindness, you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself, through Jesus your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus, and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of the one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour we stand before you, saints among saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of our old ways, take us up into the mystery of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look with favor on your people, O Lord, that what their observance outwardly declares may inwardly bring about. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as a reminder, on Fridays in Lent, we have Eucharistic Adoration until 5 p.m., concludes with benediction, and then at 5.30, we pray the Stations of the Cross in common. We hope that you can participate in all of those spiritual exercises over the course of our Fridays.